In this lesson, we're gonna spend a little more time learning about some of the additional features of the Visual Studio IDE. Uh, in order to be productive, you're gonna to need to know a little bit more about how to navigate your way through the IDE. So I wanted to stop down, spend a few moments, and highlight some of the major features of the IDE. However, for a more complete discussion, I would refer you to the Visual C Sharp Express Edition Fundamental Series or the Visual Studio Fundamental Series, okay? So in this lesson, I'm gonna demonstrate how to do a bunch of different stuff, including how to set breakpoints, step through your code line by line as it executes. I'm gonna explain how to benefit from IntelliSense, that little window that popped up while we were typing. I wanna talk about how to customize the IDE's interface to your liking and a whole lot more. The first thing I wanna do is talk about how to open up a project that you have already been working on but you had to close down and for example, to reboot your computer or whatever the case might be. So I'm gonna open up Microsoft Visual C Sharp Express Edition. And there's a couple of different ways to do this from the start page that opens automatically whenever you launch uh, the IDE. You can click one of the recent projects if it's listed there in order to open it up. You can use the open project link or icon here on the start page. Uh, you can accomplish some of the same things by going to the file menu and selecting open project or you can even look in this recent projects and solutions. It'll list uh, the top five or 10 projects that you are working on. So that's what I'm gonna choose. They will all do the exact same thing, which is open up your project that you were working on previously uh, so that you can start working on it again. Now let's talk about the IDE itself for just a moment. There are a number of different windows and, and workspaces that comprise the IDE. Some of them you can see now, some of them are hidden, some of them only appear in certain contexts. So let's start with the basics here. We've already talked about this main window, which is the place where we write our code. This is the code editor, the code window. Uh, there also is the solution explorer, which we briefly went over in the previous lesson. There's also this properties window and also a toolbox window. If I were to hover my mouse cursor over to the left-hand side, you can see it jettisons out uh, because the auto hide feature is turned on. If we were to pin down this window, it disables auto hide. And so the toolbox and the properties window are typically used whenever you're building a, uh, an application that requires a graphical user interface. You're able to drag and drop items like text boxes and buttons from the toolbox onto a designer surface and then configure things about those objects using the properties window. And we'll cover that in a whole separate series. We're going to just focus on just the C-sharp C language, so we don't really need any visual um, uh, graphical user interface, so we can ignore these windows for the moment. We've also briefly looked at the error list that pops up whenever we have encountered a problem while compiling our application, so we're somewhat familiar with that window. There's also other uh, windows that we'll see, like as we're debugging our applications in just a few moments. There's a local and watch window and a few others that become available to us in certain contexts. And so there are a couple of different contexts. There's the design time context, the, the context we're in right now, where we're actually writing code and designing our application. Whenever we select the start debugging button, we're in a new context called uh, the runtime context. This is what, or debug time rather. We're in debug mode. We are running our application within the IDE and so we are debugging and it's called debug time. There's also a compile time whenever we are compiling our applications. Uh, there are certain actions that are going on. Admittedly, it's a very short period of time, but it's another context. So all these different contexts will bring up different windows within the IDE, windows that will support the current activity that's going on, okay? So let's talk about debugging for just a moment. One of the most important features of an IDE is the ability for it to help you find out what's wrong with the code that you've written. And so one of the cool things you can do is set a breakpoint in your code, which is like a stop sign for your code. And as your application is executing, it sees that line of code where you've put up a stop sign and it will stop execution. And while execution is stopped, you can investigate things about how your application is performing. Uh, you can even, even take control of the execution from that point on, stepping through your code line by line and investigating things about it, okay? So let's demonstrate how to do just that. 
What I want to do is set a breakpoint on this line of code, uh, console.writeLine hello world. Now there's a couple of different ways to go about setting a, uh, a breakpoint on a line of code. My favorite and the easiest way is just use your mouse cursor over here in this gray area and click it once and a little red ball will appear and the whole line of code will be highlighted in red. That means I've set a breakpoint. Now, if I were to uh, click the Start Debugging button on the toolbar, our application begins to execute, but it stops executing at the stop sign, at the breakpoint, and you can see now the next line of code that will be executed is now this yellow line of code, which was formerly red, and you can see there's a little red arrow off here uh, to the left-hand side that covers up the red stop sign. And now you can see also some windows appear, like the locals window and the watch window that's tabbed behind it. There's also this call stack and immediate window. And as we come to learn more about uh, debugging applications and the Visual Studio IDE, we'll use these windows more and more. Okay, but just for now, I just want you to become familiar with the fact that they exist. So now, if I want to step through line by line each line of code, all I need to use is either the keyboard shortcut or these icons on the toolbar. Step into, step over, or step out of. And they're kind of a nuanced differences at this point. I'm just going to step over for the moment. I'll explain later as we talk about calling code and things of that nature. Let's just use F10 or this step over button to execute a line of code. So we clicked it once and noticed that now the line of execution moves from this line of code to the next line of code. If we were to look at the console window, which is currently hidden, but if we click it in the Windows toolbar, you can see that Hello World has now executed and the next line of code to execute is read line. If I were to step over that line of code, now our application is still executing. It's waiting for input from the user. So I'm gonna click the return key on the keyboard. Execution continues past that line of code to the closing curly brace for our main method and so on. If I wanna just continue and execute all code from this moment on, I'll just select the continue button formerly the start debugging button uh, to finish out the execution, okay? Now let's do this one more time. Let's go ahead and start debugging again. Notice that whenever we are looking at our application, uh, there we can hover our mouse cursor over certain things and little windows pop up. We can get some information, for example, about this args and even though it may not make a lot of sense at the moment what this really does for you, uh, this allows us to investigate things about our application, the value of variables, and we'll talk about variables a little bit later. Uh, but just be forewarned that there's some information we can garner from how our application is performing internally by simply hovering our mouse cursor over. Uh, we can also use these watch and locals windows to learn a little bit more, see the same bit of information, args, has this string with a bunch of braces and curly uh, brackets around it and so on. Okay. But let's go ahead and just stop debugging the application for now. So we're gonna use this button to eliminate any future or, or uh, any other lines of code from being executed and it just immediately stops the execution of our application. And we can get rid of this breakpoint in a number of different ways. I can click on it again and it will remove it I can turn it on and off, or I can use F9 on my keyboard or go up to the um, debug toggle breakpoint menu option, and it is removed. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about are code comments, and several times in this series, I'll comment out a line of code and replace it with a different line of code, or I'm gonna create code uh, to make a, note, a code comment to make a note to myself or make a note to somebody else who might have to work on my project in the future on what I was attempting to do with this block of code or this line of code. Uh, so a comment, you can create one in a couple different ways. The first way is to use two forward slashes and then write your comment, like so. I can also use the 
double slashes in front of a line of code, and this will essentially tell the compiler to ignore this line of code, do not execute or compile this line of code. So I can use it then for two purposes, like I said, either to document what I'm trying to accomplish or to remove lines of code uh, temporarily or permanently from the execution of the rest of my code to ignore an instruction, okay? There's also a couple of ways to do this. So I can just select multiple lines of code and then choose in the toolbar this comment out the selected lines. There's also a keyboard equivalent you saw there as I hovered over it. And you can see now both lines of code have been commented out, which means nothing will happen when our application runs. Or I can select it again and click the uncomment comment out the selected lines of code and they're back. Furthermore, I can use this forward slash star, which is over the eight key. I'm holding another shift key and hitting eight to create this asterisk character. And then I can create the opposite of that asterisk forward slash in order to comment out multiple lines of code, which is also pretty popular. And to remove them, I can just delete them. All right, so while we're here, Remember when we were typing that first line of code, that little window that popped up beneath our caret as we typed? Well, that window is called IntelliSense. And once you master it, it can perform several very helpful tasks for you. First of all, it lets you know the contextual options and will actually then finish typing for you. So in this case, I typed just the letters con and it filtered the IntelliSense to list only those commands that start with the word um, con, for example, console, console, cancel, event, args, and so on. Now, if at this point I click the, uh, the space bar, it will finish typing the entire word out because I had console highlighted in that window. So any kind of delimiter, it could be the period key on the keyboard, it will finish typing for me, or uh, if I were to, let's get back to this, uh, use the space bar or even an open parenthesis, whatever the contextually is correct in that situation, uh, you'll see that it will uh, complete my typing for me. So all I gotta do in many cases is type a couple of letters and use the arrow keys to make selections like I'm doing it here, the down arrow key and the up arrow key to find what I'm looking for. So let's continue out this line of code and go on to the next portion of it so here I'm typing in right line and it continues that process of filtering out commands that start with R W R I T. Also notice off to the right hand side, it briefly, and it went away, but let's get it back. It briefly shows a little uh, help window that describes what this particular object or method or whatever the case might be could be used for. Uh, in this case, writes text representation I wasn't fast enough, was I? Uh, writes the specified string value to the standard output stream. Okay, it also gives me other information that'll become more important to me as I learn more about C Sharp, all right? But what I use it for is um, even uh, as I code, I, I wanna refamiliarize myself sometimes with what the, the variations are between, for example, right and right line. And so having that little bit of information will just be enough of a reminder for me that I will then be able to choose the correct one. And here again, all I gotta do is just choose the next character, the open parenthesis to complete the typing of the line. Notice that it puts the capital L in line for me. That's one of the shortcuts I was talking about earlier when I said, hey, don't worry about typing everything perfectly because if you're smart and you get used to using IntelliSense, it will complete your lines of code for you, all right? Next, let's talk about how to customize Visual Studio. Visual Studio's IDE is extremely configurable. There are two configurations that we're gonna modify in this video, but feel free to change the environment to your liking so that you can feel most productive in it. Whenever you encounter some annoyance, chances are you can change the default behavior somehow, okay? So in this video, we're gonna make two modifications. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some line numbering down the left-hand column so that I can say, hey, look at line 12 and you'll be able to follow along with me, okay? And then I'm also going to change the fonts and the background colors of the code window. So to begin with, I'm gonna choose the tools, options, menu item. 
And this is what you probably will see by default. Now, what I need to do is select the show all settings here in the lower left hand corner and that will open up a bunch of additional options for me. Uh, what I'm gonna click on uh, on the left hand side will affect what I see settings wise on the right hand side. And to turn on the line numbering, I'm gonna select the text editor. In fact, I'm gonna select the sub option, all languages. And here you can see under display, there is a line numbers option. I'm gonna select and turn that on and then click OK. And when I do, you can see that I have now line numbers down the left hand column. Great. Let's go ahead now and go back to tools, options. And this time what I wanna do is go to the environment, expand that and select fonts and colors. And here I'm gonna change the item, I'm gonna leave the item foreground, well, I'll change it to white and I'll change the item background to black. And you can see it gives me a little sample preview here and I'm gonna click okay and when I do that my environment changes dramatically I could also change the size of the fonts and so on but quite frankly old habits die hard and I would prefer to have things back to the way they were okay alright so as we've been looking through the various columns and areas no doubt you've seen these little this line with a bunch of minus signs these are code rollups, and they give you the ability to hide and show passages or blocks of code. And the reason for this is to reduce the clutter as we search visually through the code that we've written, we can roll up blocks of code that we want to temporarily hide by clicking the little icon here in the, uh, the left column. And when, you, when I do that, see that the line numbering goes from 10 to 18. We've rolled up essentially eight lines of code. Now to see what's inside of that, I can merely hover my mouse cursor over the little ellipsis icon that's off to the right hand side. And you can see um, at least a snapshot of the code that's in that. And I can continue to roll up large passages of code and continue to use that ellipsis to see the code that is rolled up or wrapped up inside of there. And to expand it then I can just use the plus symbols and turning them back into minus symbols and expand it out all the way. The other thing that I want to point out is code state. Uh, I want to talk about some visual feedback regarding the state of your code, whether it's been saved or not. Uh, so when you have code that's yet to be saved, you can see it in two ways. First of all, a little asterisk will appear right next to the file name in the tab of the code window. And then secondly, you'll see a vertical stripe down the left hand side. In this case, a yellow stripe indicating that uh, we have code that needs to be saved. So I'm gonna click the Save All button on the toolbar. And when I do that, notice that it turns from yellow to green, which means I'm now in a safe state. My code has been saved. The asterisk has disappeared. Now, if I close the tab and then double click to reopen that line of code from the Solution Explorer, notice that that visual state indicator has disappeared. We no longer see it until we make another modification in our code. Okay, so I've covered a lot of very disparate ideas here in this lesson. I just want you to be somewhat familiar with some of the things that you'll see as you work your way through these lessons. Again, refer to the series that are dedicated to your particular version of the IDE, available also on Channel 9 at Microsoft.com. So again, this is a very small collection of information about the IDE that you'll need to know as you work through this series of lessons. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.